Over the last four years, this show has focused a lot on my dislikes, but this week I thought I'd share some things I do like with some people I really like, the activists and organizers who led the Democrats to victory in 2020. Like my vice president said. We did it, Joe. And it's all thanks to five key states that flipped in 2020 and Steve Kornacki. To celebrate this joyous occasion, I took off my cynical hat and went somewhere no other late night host has gone before. The sunny world of daytime. Welcome to Sam's Favorite People. We're talking to, you guessed it, my favorite, not related to me and not legally binding, people. Today, I'm talking to Netta al Hanudi, who works out in Michigan for the Muslim-led organization Engage, Luis Velasquez from Voces de la Frontera in Wisconsin, Tara Benali, who helped organize Navajo Nation in Arizona with the Rural Utah Project, 18-year-old Shayla Street from Vote That John in Pennsylvania, who couldn't even vote this election but managed to organize 95% of her high school, and representing Georgia, we have Cliff Albright and Latasha Brown. I'll have her introduce them. Well, the first thing I did right was the day I started to fight. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on. Cliff and I are co-founders of Black Voters Matter Fund. We're singing about voting. Sing. Okay, I'll stop. Why am I trying something new? because Joe Biden showed me that anything's possible if you try three times. But his fight came with some extra help. People of color voted for Biden in unprecedented numbers and these organizers helped do that. Tell me about the miracles that you performed this year. You know, I get this question asked a lot. I told people, if you want social change, we gotta knock on the doors. I mean, we didn't knock on doors this time because of COVID, but we made the calls. We made the text message. We registered people to vote. And we had 16 to 27 year olds organized who could speak multiple languages. So we represented the Muslim community speaking Urdu and Arabic. And we called like grandmothers, we're like, hey, we want you to vote, you matter. And that was special. Okay, maybe it would be quicker if you just gave me a list of things that you did not do. <laughs> From knocking on doors to virtual town halls to creating a really cool bus, our organizers did it all. People would walk up, and sometimes they wouldn't walk up. They would be across the street, and I'd be like, yo, you, in the orange shirt, I'm talking to you. People would be like, who are you, are you talking to me? I'm a grown ass man. Like, are you asking me to register to vote? And I'd be like, yeah, and I'm 17 years old and I can't even vote. So you should take the advantage of your right. I love what you've done with cat calling. <laughs> I knew the youth would save us. And in places like Navajo Nation, registering to vote is difficult to navigate due to the lack of traditional street addresses, but you guessed it, Tara figured it out, which is why she's one of <laughs> Sam's favorite people. Sorry, go ahead, Tara. We partnered with uh, Google and implemented the PLUS code. It's just a shortened version of a geo coordinates. And so that made it so much easier for people to, community members to see where it was they reside in which district that they needed to vote in. I'm kind of picturing you right now driving and crisscrossing across multiple states every day for a year. My day started most times about 3.30 in the morning and ended about, oh, anywhere from 7.30 to 8.30 at night. You're making me look very bad. <laughs> making me look like a very lazy person. Samantha, that's what we gotta do around building democracy. We gotta really understand how fragile democracy is in this country and that even part of our work, what we say in Black Voters Matter is our work is 365 days out of the year. When do you actually get a day? <laughs> is there a breather involved? Cliff, when are we gonna take a breather? <laughs> well, te technically today is our vacation day. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so you, see, you see how that wound up. Ugh, vacations during COVID are the worst. It's not only about Biden, it's about our lives. Mm -hmm. When we voted, we voted for Breonna Taylor, we voted for our yummy neighbors that are getting deported every single day, and we voted for the children that are locked up in cages. Here I am, a DACA recipient, a person who cannot vote, but who does have that influence on others. So I encourage people, even if you're not um, a person who can vote, you do have that voice and you can encourage others to vote for justice and to vote for compassion. Justice, compassion? Daytime TV really does make you cry. Because of groups like these, more people voted than ever before, which makes them heroes, even without the spandex. So the voting happened, what happens next? So when you ask the question about, you know, what, what's next, think about what's taking place, black voters literally decided who the Democratic nominee would be at the beginning of 2020, and then, 
played a major role in, in that nominee getting elected in November 2020, and then in January of 2021 made it possible so that that nominee, now president-elect, would actually have a Senate that would help him get through an agenda and issues that we were organizing around. Yeah. Saying thank you to black voters and thank you to black women is great, but actually following through and holding folks accountable and following through on the issues that we're passionate about, that would be the biggest thing. That's, that's what we're looking forward to in 2021. I couldn't have an Emmy-worthy daytime show without giving out gifts. So we made donations to each of their organizations on behalf of all of America. Thank you, organizers. We owe you one. And by one, I mean democracy. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.